much. What, what did you think of the World Health Organization's warning? I mean, I, you know, I was pretty struck by the, the uh, organization saying, don't get pregnant right now. Yeah, I, I think it's a good warning, I, and I very much respect that the WHO came out that way. We, we are all about at the Gates Foundation making sure that children can survive and thrive no matter where they are in the world. And one of our big areas of focus is infectious diseases, particularly the ones that affect the poor. So Zika is the kind of thing that we care deeply about. The issue with Zika virus is that in many people it's a mild illness, not something to worry about. But the problem with Zika is if pregnant women get Zika virus, their babies can have a significant and severe birth defect. Microcephaly, which means your head is small, but very, very sadly and importantly, brain disorders. Mm -hmm. It causes a, a brain disorder. And so the WHO's guidance is important for the world to know and for pregnant women to know um, or women who are thinking of becoming pregnant to avoid pregnancy if they're in an area with Zika. Yeah, I was watching you at that code conference where you, where you brought out a box that looked like Chinese takeout, uh, mm -hmm. but it was actually a, a kit uh, for this approach that aims to spread a disease among mosquitoes that would prevent the bugs from spreading Zika and other diseases. Explain what you were trying to do. The headline was, uh, the Gates Foundation is stopping, trying to stop Zika by giving mosquitoes a sexually transmitted disease. Yes. Uh, actually, the, the way that you can think about this approach is almost like you're giving a probiotic to mosquitoes. So it turns out that there's, there's a bacteria, a, a, and actually a harmless bacteria called Wolbachia. And the scientific approach here that we've been investing in literally since 2005. So this is a long-term bet we can take as a foundation, not needing to get a return because right. we're not for profit. So the, the concept here is that the mosquitoes get infected with this harmless bacteria and it interferes with them transmitting Zika, dengue fever, or chikungunya. Wow. So we're actually creating a bacteria that just lives within the mosquito and actually this bacteria affects 60 percent of all the insects on earth. It just lives commensal with that insect. Yeah. And so if we can get these bad mosquitoes to have this bacteria, it renders them less harmful. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because you can look at a disease like Zika and not expect a return and just invest in it. But in order to really move the needle, you need to have some partnerships with private companies, right? That's How right. do you do that? How do you get somebody who's running a private company who is answering to shareholders uh, to yeah. care about something that you're looking at, like Zika, who was on nobody's list so many years ago? Yeah. So it's one of the big challenges at the Gates Foundation is it's not uncommon that the diseases we care about, malaria, tuberculosis, HIV, affect the poor poorest of the world. And so businesses have to be accountable to their shareholders. We've put together a number of different tools. We have a, a group called Program Related Investments, and we have tools to go to a company and say, look, if you work on Zika, if you work on malaria with a charitable intent, we'll invest in your company, we'll give you a grant, we can do what's called a volume guarantee to backstop their capital or use tiered pricing where they can have differential prices in richer countries and poorer countries. And in using these tools, we can collaborate with private industry to get them to work on the causes we care about. Yeah, because it's very tough to do what you're doing, uh, given the, the resources and the scarcity of it. You, you, you've got, the, for example, the NIH lowering the money uh, that it is uh, giving a, around. You've got, you've, you've got money being tight. So where else do you turn other than the private organizations? Well, actually, we... we we need everybody involved. We need the NIH and other government agencies, so yeah. we advocate for global research and development spending. We need private industry. We yeah. need governments. We need universities. So the president we get everybody point, involved. No, the president requested $1.9 billion for Zika in February. Congress says it should be lower than that because money is so tight. What, what do you think in terms of Congress and, and how Congress can act better or faster on, in fun, on funding? Well, I, I'm a big advocate and we're big advocates at the Gates Foundation for the funding for Zika and specifically that that Zika funding not take away from other R&D projects because all of that R&D has a great return 
for America and for the globe. And so we're, we are advocates for that Zika funding. It's extremely important as summer approaches in the United States that we not get complacent about Zika and the mosquitoes. Yeah. Um, so far, there's been no mosquito-borne transmission of Zika in the U.S. Right. There's been travelers infected, and there's been sexual transmission, but we need to be ready for Zika this summer. Yeah, which is why so many people, athletes included, are pulling out of the Brazil Olympics. They're afraid. So you recently marked two years as CEO of the Gates Foundation. Yes. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. I guess it's gone quickly. <laughs> two for years it. has gone fast. Yeah. Tell us about the priorities at the foundation. Uh, you've got global health. Uh, obviously, yeah. you've got education. Talk, talk to us about yeah. your other priorities. So, so the, the overriding mission and objective of the Gates Foundation is the belief that all lives have equal value. So we care deeply that children, no matter what their zip code, no matter what their geography, can survive and thrive. We tackle infectious diseases, especially those that affect the poorest. Um, that's extremely important to us. We're also someone who wants to, to call others into action. So you've read about the Giving Pledge and heard about the Giving Pledge. There's just recently been announced 17 new signers. Wow. So we're well, that's pro philanthropy. Also, I mean, Bill Gates is unbelievable with that. He's mm -hmm. going to colleagues and friends and uh, people in his bracket and encouraging them to uh, join the Giving Pledge, that's which right. is what? Which is promise your wealth to the foundation. Actually, promise your wealth to the world that you'll give away at least half of your wealth during your life. Not necessarily the Gates Foundation, oh, no. but just give it away. We believe that other people may or may not care about the same things we care about, but it's all giving is good. And actually, we're, we're inclined to encourage people to be generous, which is a wonderful part of the mission of the foundation. I just recently wrote a letter uh, celebrating my two years at the foundation, and I wanted to help people understand some things about the foundation they may not know. A good example is our tobacco control efforts, really helping the world with something that still kills six million people every year. Unbelievable. And, and is important to us because, again, it is affecting increasingly poor countries. Um, so we want to help those countries understand the, the health of their nation and the importance of tobacco control. You've been working a lot with Melinda Gates. She's much yes. more involved, right, than, yes. than ever uh, about education as well as precision health. Talk to us about precision health and what that means, how that is intended to solve some of the real challenges out there. Right. So we've all heard about precision medicine right. and, and the precision medicine initiative. Precision medicine is getting the right drug to the right patient at the right time. Really amazing things in cancer and other diseases. Precision public health is our ability to tap into these more precise tools like genetic sequencing, like big data, self-monitoring, the power of computing today, and use that to tackle illnesses like HIV, like malaria, like cervical cancer that affect communities that often involve the poor so we can get the right interventions to populations in the right geography. Yeah. It's a much more poor friendly way to think about it and it expands our best tools and our best tactics so that everyone in the world can thrive. Yeah, I, I heard Bill Gates talking about this once whereas, you know, it, it doesn't matter how much medicine you have, if that medicine cannot get to the people who need it right. in the appropriate amount of time, it doesn't it doesn't matter. And so that's why he came out with this refrigeration. The refrigeration. To keep the drugs in refriger refrigerated while they travel to wherever in Africa and other places. That's right. Well it, we've all been worried about pandemics and we just the world just yeah. was dealing with Ebola. And one of the things we learned with Ebola is our ability to know precisely where Ebola was and is and where it might go next using geospatial mapping and really modern tools of precision public health to track disease because all these pandemics that affect yeah. countries that many people haven't thought about in a long time are a threat for the whole globe. <laughs>